Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship this morning. And if you're home because you're not feeling well, well, I sure hope that you get better very quickly. Um, Take a moment, please, to make sure you sign in, uh, register your attendance so we know who is watching outline and include everybody in your family that is watching today. So today we're focusing in on the good deposit, right? That which God has done in us, that great work that he has done in you and in me and how he continues and sustains that even today. Let's get going with our opening song. to live We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsively Psalm 62. 
For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him, like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is in him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for you will render to a man according to his work. This morning, as we turn to our time of confession and forgiveness, sometimes we don't really deeply think about what truly is going on that you are at this point when we pause, putting anything that is heavy on your heart, you're putting that at the foot of the cross. But more importantly, when you hear those words of forgiveness that I will speak to you, those come from Jesus himself. And it's good for us to remember that that is where it's coming from because what Jesus says and is connected to his promises, we know is very certain. So as far as the east is from the west, that's how far that sin will be from us. So let's pause a moment for self-reflection. Together we confess, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the forgiveness you give daily. Help us to treasure and desire the gifts of forgiveness, life, and new life we receive in our baptismal remembrance and in the Lord's Supper. Prepare our hearts to once again receive the gift of forgiveness in your absolution of our sins. Set us on a new path in life that shines the love of Jesus and gives us a desire to serve you faithfully. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Habakkuk chapters 1 and 2. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear, or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at my watchpost and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. For it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If, you re if your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. 
If he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of the mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at the table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink and afterwards you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what he was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome and good morning. Today in our children's message, we're going to learn about how God saves us from our enemies. Now in our Sunday school lesson, we learned about a king of Judah who did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and that he appointed prophets and priests who were kind of like the pastors to go out and to teach the people about God's word. Kind of how like here at St. Stephen, Pastor Joe teaches us about God's word, right? But that king of Judah had some enemies and those bad people wanted to take the king's land. But God was with the king of Judah and that when the king of Judah led people out to meet the bad people, right? He saw that God had already defeated his enemies. Now, that's because God wanted the king of Judah to trust in him for protection. Now, God wants us to trust in him, right? Not only for everything that he provides for us, but he also wants us to trust in him that he will protect us from our enemies. Now, what, what are some enemies that God protects us from, or saves us from, rather, right? God saves us from our biggest enemy because we all share, right, one big giant enemy that we can't defeat. That enemy is sin, but God protects and saves us from sin. Now, how does God save us from our enemies, particularly sin, right? God sent who? Jesus, right, who died on the cross to take away our sin. And that's how God saves us from our enemies. Now, let's fold our hands and pray. Thank God for saving us from our enemies. Ready? Dear God, help us to teach those around us about Jesus. But thank you especially for sending Jesus, who saves us from our enemies, but particularly from our biggest enemy, sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be to you. And so our title of the sermon today is this, The Good Deposit. And of course, we want to guard that good deposit. And that's St. Paul's words to Timothy, to the church in Ephesus, to you and me even this day. And we know that good deposit is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was given to us, His name was given to us in our baptism. We receive His very body and blood when we kneel at the altar of this rail and receive His body and blood uh, that is given for us, for us strengthening our lives. We got it earlier when we heard those forgiving words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is the deposit that we want to hold on to. God's good gifts for you and for me. Now you and I have been brought into this kingdom according to God's holy will. In my pastor's page, if you haven't read it already, I, I kind of pick up a little bit on this as I talk about one of those cool things that I thought during this ministry clarity process. We kept going back to those words. They were used by our leader. They were used all over the place on the uh, Lutheran Church Extension Fund website when they talk about helping congregations out. It is according to God's will. And we see this over and over and over again. Often I have heard other people talk, though, in this way, even perhaps struggle with this question. What is God's will for my life? Now see, that question doesn't sound like something that's crystal clear, right? <laughs> it doesn't sound like a clarity process at all. But when we get in tune to understanding what is according to God's will, well, that certainly can help us out. And that's something that we want to work on, at least hopefully work on today. St. Paul apparently wasn't struggling with this question at all. St. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. Now, St. Paul's talking about his life, but he wasn't talking about his best life ever. <laughs> but remember, his understanding of God's will for his life was clear, crystal clear. On that road to Damascus, when he was going to persecute Jesus' church, what happened? He got a blinding light, and the Lord Jesus appeared to him and gave him direction for his life. In fact, he was going to be a spokesperson and ends up being the greatest missionary of all times. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, I would like that, right? I would like this clear direction. Well, remember, St. <laughs> Paul got bit by poisonous snakes. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten and he was in jail probably when he was even writing this. So be careful what you ask for. But guessing our life looks a little bit more like perhaps Timothy's life or even those in Ephesus. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. You see, I'm thinking that's how most of us came into the kingdom work in our baptism. That's what this made me think about was baptism. And I would guess that most of us did come into it that exact way. We were brought by our parents to a baptismal font somewhere in probably a Lutheran church. Mine was a Catholic church. And that's when God put his name on me. It's kind of interesting because in our discipleship journey, that has uh, the session at number two. Now, the first one is the assurance of salvation. That's the first lesson. And I guess that makes sense if you're using that particular booklet uh, to help somebody understand uh, about your friend Jesus, right? If you were walking through somebody in that regard. Think of it this way. We wouldn't give a little baby infant a booklet to read. No, we just simply baptize them, and that's the way we begin. But it got me to thinking, is, 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 is that process really 
a little bit backwards, because I think it sort of is a little bit backwards. I wonder if through this ministry clarity thing, if, if Team Jesus were to come up with our own little booklet, uh, a discipleship journey booklet of sorts, would it look a little different? And perhaps would we put baptism or that good deposit as one of those first things, that first session? I think it maybe would. You see, because when we think about our baptism, we are seeing that it's God the one that is at work. It's God the one that is giving us our identity. And we are always looking back to that, to our baptism. We are always looking back at the point where Christ once again enters into our life. It may be when we come to receive the Lord's Supper at the rail, right? And we receive his very body and blood for the strengthening of our lives. See, this helps us understand our purpose and our identity and where things start in our life lived with Christ. You see, when we think about it in terms of, uh, uh, of according to God's holy will in our life, we see that God is indeed at work in us. And that's what keeps us in our faith. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. You see, it's all here. Everything that we need is already here. St. Paul is encouraging Timothy in that way, and also the Ephesians and you and me in this same way. It's all that we need, Jesus. And God provides everything that we need. We simply stay focused in on the cross. We stay focused in on Jesus. This is what fans into flame this life that we live in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It all starts with Jesus, and it's all powered by Jesus. So St. Paul encourages once again, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages even began. These words are not just for Timothy and for the Ephesians, like I said, but they are for us. The answer for God's will in our life, it's always before us. It's not as if it's a, a hidden thing for you and for me. We just simply look at our station in life. Are we a husband? Are we a father? Are we a pastor? Are we a worker? Whatever it is that God has given us to do in this life, well, that's His will for our lives. It's not complicated. God tries to make it very simple. He tries to keep it very plain for you and for me to understand. So when, whenever we face any kind of trial or tribulation in life, we have to remember, this is according to God's will. And since God's the one that's willing it for you and for me, He's the one that also promises to see us through no matter what. You see, God's Word guides us. It guides our steps. St. Paul says, follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Remember that. Follow the pattern. What does that mean? I mean, sure, it, it means we are going to mess up at times, right? But we follow the pattern. Remember last week we talked about that in church. It was focusing in on the Word of God, and that leads us to meditation and prayer. And then we apply that to our lives, which turns us back to God's Word. And it's centered upon the cross, where we find forgiveness, where we find life where we find strength to live our lives for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
It keeps us focused on what is necessary, what is truly necessary. St. Paul reminds us, by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. See, it gets back to this good deposit. That good deposit was given to you and to me in our baptism. That good deposit that we need to protect, well, we protect it whenever we are in God's Word, whenever we are in prayer, whenever we're receiving the very body and blood of Jesus, we are guarding that good deposit because God loves to be generous with His good gifts. Remember the good deposit. The good deposit. That's what we have in Jesus. Team Jesus, it's all about the good deposit according to God's holy will. You see, our ministry is crystal clear when we understand what that good deposit truly is. It's living our life in Jesus Christ. It's living our life for Jesus Christ, which means living selflessly for one another because that's what Team Jesus is all about. As we continue to move forward in our life as God's family, we remember the good deposit. We remember Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts He has blessed us with and entrusted to us for His kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Here are our top Team Jesus announcements for this week. We will be celebrating LWML Sunday next week on October 9th. If you join us in person for worship, be sure to bring in your mite boxes with your spare change and help support LWML's surface efforts. Also, mark your calendars for our annual Community Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat will be held on Sunday, October 30th from 2.30 to 4 p.m. in the parking lot and courtyard areas of the church. Volunteer sign-ups for decorating a trunk or volunteering for games can be found at the Connection Center on site or by contacting the church office. Also, Tassels is hosting their first ever trivia night here at St. Stephen on Saturday, October 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Tickets are $15 per person, and there will be teams of four to six people. The theme for Trivia Night is Movie Night. More information is available in Team Jesus News. Tassels is also placing nut orders for the holidays again this year, so visit the Tassels table or contact the office to get your nut order form and get your orders in. All orders and payments are due to the Tassels table by October 30th. To find out more about what's going on here at St. Stephen, be sure to check this week's issue of the Team Jesus News. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we want to continue to pray for George Hauser and the Hauser family, as again, uh, George has been placed on hospice. P- continued prayers for Barb Baker and her uh, upcoming decisions for what they want to do with her heart condition. Uh, prayers uh, for them and for the family in dealing with that. Uh, prayers for uh, Michelle Varley's family as her uh, mother-in-law uh, passed away. Also prayers for Sue. This is Terry Ullman's sister that has lupus and has uh, damaged eyesight from the medication that she's been taking. Uh, prayers for Randy. This is a neighbor of Diana Smith's uh, that's recovering from heart surgery. And also another neighbor, June, has a granddaughter, Madeline, that's battling leukemia and she's only 19 years old. Again, prayers especially for all those in Florida that have been him- impacted by Hurricane Ian, um, especially uh, my cousin Kim and her family, the Yokums, uh, Kevin Yokum that's down there, and uh, Scarrow, Michaela, and Ben that are uh, down there, uh, That are, and just that things are going okay for them. Also the Hill family, Rich and Jeannie Hill, Jeff uh, Smith, Diana's son, and also Kathy Hughes, who used to be a member here that moved down to that area. So prayers for all of them. And then prayers for our Fern Porter. This is a friend of Angie Vaspiner's that uh, her cancer is back. And so we pray for uh, a clear direction uh, for them. And also for Art Haynes. This is a classmate of Terry Ullman's uh, that's battling the West Nile virus. Prayers for Sherry. This is a daughter of a family member of Candy Fox. Uh, that has heart surgery and is in need of a new heart. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, empower your church to be obedient to following the great commission of making disciples. Especially we ask you to bless and equip us so that we are better equipped to share the hope of Jesus that we have with others. Open doors to our top 10 list so that we have opportunities to bring the lost into a closer relationship with your Son and our Savior, and guide our Team Jesus family as we continue to work through our ministry clarity process so that your kingdom work is done in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you would bring peace to the nations, guide all the leaders of our world to govern according to your justice and righteousness. We know that you are in control of all things and that all things are working towards your greater purposes. So watch over those who serve in our armed forces, our law enforcement, all first responders, and our medical workers. Send your angels to guard and protect those that are serving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting Father, look with mercy on the sick, injured, and recovering. Especially we pray for George, for Barb. We pray for Randy, for June's daughter, Madeline. We pray for those uh, Florida folks. Pray for Fern, pray for Art, and for Sherry. Be with those who are mourning the death of loved ones, especially the Varley family. Comfort them that they may find hope in the resurrection of your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with those uh, having baptismal anniversaries, Holly, Kira, James, Ava, Melinda, and Candy. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. So we rejoice with Nate and Penny, Mike and Mary, Andy and Allison, and Tony and Anne as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you all. Amen.
Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good, all your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone, higher than my sight, high above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. Follow you, who you love, I'll love, how you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you. Light into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will find all I need in you alone. In you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. This life I lose, I will follow you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you.